Hello everyone and welcome to the Academic Search Complete demonstration video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to locate and search in Academic Search Complete. Academic Search Complete is another database here at the library. First, on the library homepage, go to the Articles and Databases tab. Then, under the Favorite Databases list, Academic Search Complete is the first database listed. If you are trying to access the database from off campus, you'll need to log in with your W number and six digit birth date. But if you're on campus like I am, then you will open it right away. Type your topic into the search bar. For me, I'm using Digital Divide. We are now going to apply some limiters. That's the fancy name for the filters that we used in the previous assignment. Limiters allow you to tell the database what type of source you want to have returned. If you scroll beneath the search boxes, there's a section labeled Limit Your Results. We are going to use three of these limiters today. The first one is a checkbox for full text. By checking this, it means that I will only get articles that I can read the full text of. Right beneath it is another checkbox for scholarly peer-reviewed journals. Selecting this means that all the results I get back will be articles that were published in scholarly peer-reviewed journals. We will talk later more about what scholarly and peer-reviewed mean, but for now, if your professors ask you to use this type of source, you'll know that this is a way you can make sure you get them. The last limiter is under language. You'll need to scroll down until you see English and then click on it. That highlights it and indicates that it's selected. Once you have your topic in the search bar and all three of these limiters listed, click the search button. You are then given a list of results. On the left hand side, you can actually see that it lists what you've typed in and what limiters you've put. So if you wanted to take any of these away, you could click on the little X. Or if you forgot to put a limiter on the previous search page, then you can adjust your limiters while we're here. For example, while all of these listed are from scholarly peer-reviewed journals, I'm not interested at all in book reviews. So I am going to add an additional limiter under source type. Now we need to select an article that is interesting to us and seems relevant to what we want to discuss. It might not be the first one listed, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to select the first one here. When you click on the article title, you are taken to the article's record. A record is a single unit that displays all the information about a source. It's sort of like a driver's license, where it gives you a snapshot of what the article is without actually being the article. Each record is then organized into various fields. These fields have different pieces of information in them. This is important to know because the way this is set up affects both how we search databases and how we find information in them. For now, we're going to focus on how do we identify citation information. Some of the pieces are fairly simple. For example, if I want the authors, I would go to the field that's labeled authors. All of these individuals would be there. If you have three or more authors, you can actually just put the first author followed by ETAL. That little ETAL or et al indicates that there's many more authors listed. But if you have just two, you have to list both. In the source field, we are given everything about this periodical that the article was published in. Remember, periodicals are things like magazines, newspapers, and scholarly journals. Articles are published inside of these rather than individually. So in the source field, we have the 
title of the periodical, followed by the publication date, the volume number, and the issue number. So even though this is a single field, it has multiple pieces of citation information. I point this out because if you think back to when we used Research Library ProQuest, we also had the publication title, publication date, volume number, and issue number, but they were each presented in a singular field. So the big takeaway from this is most of these databases do provide the same information. They might just be labeled a little bit differently. For the article title, it's not labeled at all, but it's the very first thing at the very top of the record. Another benefit of having the information in the database is these have been looked over by a person and organized in some kind of way. So we have two things here that can help us decide, is this a relevant source to me or not? Relevant means, is this going to be useful to me? Subject terms tell us the overall subjects that this article is about. Mine include things like digital divide, which is highly relevant because it matches my search term, labor market, digital technology, and more. If I were interested in the digital divide in libraries specifically, then this one about the labor market might actually not be that relevant to me. But if I were doing some kind of labor analysis for a business class, or I was looking up for a business itself, then this might actually be helpful. The abstract then gives us a summary of what this article is about. So I could read this further to see, okay, based on these subjects, I think it's useful. Let me give the abstract a read and find out a little bit more. But there are some times where the record is just not enough. You will need to use the actual full article. On the top left, you will see that I have two different full text options here. I have an HTML full text and a PDF full text. This little plum X metrics is not a full text, so don't worry about that. The HTML full text is the full text of the article, but not organized the way it looks in print. So you can see here as I scroll down that it includes all the information that's printed but if there are any charts or graphs, these are not put into the HTML usually. This one actually does have one, which is highly unusual. Another problem with using the HTML is that there's no page numbers. So if you have a professor who really wants you to have specific pages, then the HTML may not be enough. The PDF full text, on the other hand, is just like a scanned copy of the article. It includes all the formatting, just like the print version. So it includes page numbers, as you can see here, as well as any charts or other graphics. Depending on your source, you may have one of these, both of these, or you may have something called Full Text Finder. Full Text Finder means we do have access to that article, but not in this database. You'll need to go to a different database. On the right-hand side, there's a tools menu. If you're using a phone to try and search, you may notice that these little arrows need to be clicked in order to extend it. So if you see just the picture icons, you can click on these little arrows to extend it to where it actually tells you what the tools are. One tool that's handy is the citation tool. These provide you with pre-made citations in various formats. We will scroll down until we see MLA. And then I could copy and paste this. Do note that when you are trying to create citations for your courses, 
These are good starting places, but you always want to double check to make sure they're fully accurate. Usually the big things like author and title and things are correct, but they may be in all caps or have a comma in the wrong place or something small like that. Another useful tool is the permalink. In databases, what we have up here in the URL bar is actually not the address the same way it is for websites. That's what the permalink is. The permalink is the permanent access to this source. So if you want to find this exact article again very quickly, it's better to grab the permalink for your records and some uh, citation formats also require a permalink. There are also other tools here that may be useful to you. So I encourage you to explore them and see which two or more might be helpful to you in the future. I hope that this video is helpful to you as you prepare for the assignment. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'm happy to meet with you during class, during my office hours in Google Meet, or via email.